and kerosene, which would be a very similar fuel in terms of the fuel properties as jet fuel, but it would be clean, presumably, of aluminum. And so we've been comparing those two fuels. Emissions from the jet fuel were tested in a fully operational scale model jet engine. The process produces the same exhaust that you get out of any jet engine. The emissions test looked at any solid particles in the exhaust soot using a special quartz filter. See, and you can see the difference. There's the clean side, there's the dirty side. The filter is placed in a special device that will burn it and examine the products of the combustion. So I'm going to just leave this closed for a minute. The quartz filter that would have captured any evidence of aluminum in the engine's exhaust is now ready for analysis. And now what you should see is we'll see, actually, if we watch here, we should see a couple spikes start to take off. Well, the conclusions we found were pretty much what we expected when we started out, are that uh, there's no significant differences between the samples of jet fuel we tested and the kerosene. If you look at that response, it is, you know, essentially identical. As an additional test, Best Evidence asked the scientists at Kettering to analyze the exhaust gases emitted by our jet fuel sample. Some chemtrail believers suspect sulfur could be used in atmospheric cooling experiments that could help reverse global warming. EPA regulations are require us to move, remove sulfur because the SO2 compounds are hard on our lungs. So even if sulfur compounds were good at cooling the earth off, we certainly wouldn't want to be adding them in fuel. But the gas emissions analyzer did find minute traces of sulfur, however, within the acceptable range. The sulfur readings look very normal. It looks like regular commercial fuel, um, very similar to diesel. There's one final test result that uses an atomic absorption spectrometer. We're looking for absorption of that aluminum uh, frequency light and that would occur if there was aluminum in that fuel and we didn't see any significant difference there you have to realize that we're measuring things on the level at parts per million level millions of dollars worth of equipment and the expertise of several chemical and mechanical engineers at kettering university failed to locate the presence of statistically significant amounts of aluminum or sulfur compounds in our sample of jet fuel the problem you have with all these experiments is we, we did use just one sample. Now, I will indicate we went right out to the airport. You know, they didn't pull some special sample for us. It was just standard commercial grade fuel, aviation fuel. Uh, but people are always going to argue the fact that, well, that's just one sample. So maybe, that, maybe they're not doping the fuel here in Flint, Michigan. If no one is doping commercial jet fuel anywhere else, and additives are not responsible for higher levels of aluminum in the atmosphere, then chemtrail believers say it could be coming from military jets. The United States Air Force releases tons of aluminum-coated fiberglass called chaff over California and other states. This form of aluminum is injected directly into the atmosphere by military aircraft. Could it account for the higher doses of aluminum that chemtrail believers say accompanies unusual aircraft activity? We'll investigate that on Best Evidence. Best evidence testing at Kettering University in Flint, Michigan, of liquid and engine emissions for commercial aircraft revealed no significant traces of either aluminum or sulfur. These substances are often cited by people who believe normal jet contrails are actually laden with experimental chemicals. Looking up from ground level, we can observe chemtrails that are much different from the normal condensation trail. The visual evidence is mounting, and with it, the chemtrail believers' concerns have grown. What the scientists at Kettering University tested was commercial jet fuel. The United States Air Force did not grant Best Evidence's request for a sample of the high-performance fuel they use in military jet aircraft. And that, according to those who believe in chemical contrails, raises another concern. The United States Air Force releases tons of aluminum-coated fiberglass called chaff over California and other states. Chaff isn't an aluminum fuel additive. It's ejected from the underbelly of a military aircraft
to confuse radar and avoid detection by enemy surveillance. They're like little needles uh, coated with aluminum, and they're bundled together, and they have been used since the Second World War to produce artificial targets for radar. Chaff drifting in the air can also help scientists track wind currents. When it's released from an aircraft, these needles are so small and so lightweight, they, they, they follow the air motion. So it's a very clever way of getting wind measurements in clear air. Chaff technology can therefore be used in tracking weather modification experiments. The Department of Defense just a year or two ago sponsored a workshop in Washington, D.C. on weather modification. So it makes you wonder if, uh, in fact, the military is still continuing to address uh, weather modification in their, you know, in their toolkit. And that's fine. I, I have no problem with that. For every convincing statistic and dramatic visual about something strange going on in the skies, there's a counter-argument from the skeptics that's equally persuasive. Whether anyone can be proven innocent or guilty, there's little doubt that the technology and the potential for chemical contrail experimentation does exist. I've contacted the U.S. Air Force and they said we are not doing that, it's not true. This is the same body that has come out with a report owning the weather in 2025 calling for weather force specialists flying tankers to lay reflective particles in an operation they call aerial obscuration. We need to take advantage of everybody on this planet to help solve the problem of global warming. If we can do it with some form of climate engineering, all the better. According to chemtrail believers like Rosalind Peterson, Dave Dickey and Will Thomas, the evidence seems irrefutable. They're convinced that chemicals are being placed in the atmosphere using jet aircraft and their contrails. These activities, they say, are reckless attempts at climate change and they are being kept a secret. In the winter of 2005, the United States government established a Federal Bureau of Weather Modification in Washington, D.C. This is a government-mandated agency whose stated mission is to modify the weather and climate. Under this rubric, I believe they could come out and admit to a chemtrail-type project. The case we call chemical contrails may never be solved without full government disclosure. And yet neither side in the debate denies that contrails are a problem. Contrails are a natural consequence of jet travel. They spread and linger and become part of the cloud cover over the Earth. Scientists acknowledge that in this way they contribute to global warming. We don't have a hundred years, we have maybe 20 years before we start seeing some of the serious effects of climate change. Eyewitness accounts, backed up by satellite images, prove just how widely contrails are blanketing the planet. But what isn't clear is whether any program is actually underway in our blue skies while the public remains in the dark. I would not be surprised to see in the next year or two, as public clamor increases for something to be done to mitigate the worst effects of climate change, that the U.S. government could come out and admit to this program. If we're not going to be able to come up with replacement technologies in time, we're not going to be able to regulate emissions in time, we're really left with taking these other, other extraordinary means. The goal is to reduce the warming of the Earth before the catastrophe comes. 